With the increase in the sharing of data and information online, there is a need to maintain proper routing and efficient data transmission from sender to the receiver node, which comes under the scope for today's topic. Hi guys and welcome to yet another interesting video by Simply Learn. But before we begin, if you love watching tech videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from us. Let's take a look at today's agenda. To begin with, we will look into what are switching techniques. Why to apply these switching techniques? And in the end, we will look into different types of switching techniques. Let's move on with the first heading, that is, what are switching techniques? Switching techniques are network techniques responsible for overseeing the transmission of data over different communication channels. They are also responsible for choosing the best route for data transfer. Next, we will look into why to apply these switching techniques. Using the switching techniques, we can choose the best and the most efficient route for data transfer in the network. For example, if we want to send some data from node A to node B, we can do so by moving from node A to a switch, then node D, then to node B. But doesn't this seem like too long? This is where the switching techniques plays its role. Using the switching technique, we can choose the smallest and the most efficient way, that is node A, switch, then to the node B. Next, we will look into different types of switching techniques. Switching techniques can be divided into three primary types. The first is circuit switching that requires a predestined path for data transmission. Then we have message switching which integrates the destination address with the data for transmission. And in the end, we have packet switching that divides its message into smaller units known as packets. Packet switching can further be divided into two different types that are virtual switching and datagram switching. Now let's look into some details regarding each of the types. On the first note, we have circuit switching. In circuit switching, for data transmission to occur, a pre-established path is required between the sender and the receiver node. For example, assume that we call someone. Then this request is sent over to the network switches. And a route is to be established for the signal to pass through. After that system, assigns a route for the signal to pass through, then the receiver receives the call from the caller side. This is how it works. Now let's look into some points to remember about circuit switching. For circuit switching, we require a dedicated channel established between the source and the destination node for the network to pass through. The data transmission can take place only after the path is established. And the last point to remember is, other than the sender and the destination node, no node can interfere with the transmission of data to the established route. Let's look at some advantages and disadvantages of applying circuit switching in a network. For first one, we have advantages. Data transmission in circuit switching is sure to be established due to the predestined path. Circuit switching is preferred for long and continuous transmission of data due to the pre-established path route. Then let's look into some disadvantages. The time required to establish the connection is quite long due to the time required to establish a path. Also, due to the continuous transmission of data in circuit switching, more bandwidth is required for maintaining the connection. Let's move on with message switching. In message switching, no predestined path is established between the sender and the destination node in the message. This technique integrates the destination address into the data transmitted and is shared over the network. 
Let's look into the setup to better understand the working of message switching. For first step, the sender node integrates the destination address into the message. Then the whole message is transmitted to the switching node in the network where it gets stored for the next transmission. And similarly, like the second step, this transmission of data is done over the whole network. And finally, through the destination address in the data, it reaches the receiver node. This is how the message switching works. Let's take a look at some points to remember about message switching. In message switching, no predestined path is established. It uses dynamic routing as the message is transmitted through the communication channel in real time. The each node in network switching stores the data unless it is transferred over to the next switch node. Let's take a look at some advantages and disadvantages of applying method switching. To begin with, let's take a look at the advantages. The size of the data that can be transmitted over message switching is variable. In message switching, the use of bandwidth is done in an efficient manner. Now let's look into some disadvantages. For message switching, the nodes that are known as the switch node is to be provided with sufficient storage memory. There is a delay in reaching the destination due to the message technique. That is, the message has to stop at each of the switch node before it is transferred over to the destination node. Now let's look into the last switching technique that is packet switching. In packet switching, the message is broken into smaller data units known as packets. These packets are appended with relevant network details for the transmission over the network. Let's look into the working of packet switching. We know that in packet switching, the data is broken into smaller units packets, which each packet is given a sequence number for identification. These packets are integrated with required sender and receiver address and switching method to choose the smallest route to reach the destination node. These packets are then recombined at the destination node in the correct sequence order. Now let's look into some points to remember for packet switching. For packet switching, all the data packets that are provided with unique number for identification at the receiver end, that is 1, 2, 3 and 4 in the previous example we just used. Packet switching chooses the most shortest path possible for the data to reach the destination end. In case we have unreached packet or some unattained packet, the whole message from the sender side is sent again to the receiver end. Now let's look into some details regarding advantages and disadvantages of applying packet switching. Advantages of using packet switching is it provides rerouting in case the network node is busy. It also allows multiple users to access the same network and no predestined path is needed. The disadvantage of applying packet switching is the protocols that are needed for the working of packet switching is very complex. There are often cases of loss of data packets during the transmission in case of overloading or corruption of data. With this, we have understood how our data is transmitted over different communication channels and how to choose the most efficient path to reach the destination end. With this, we have reached the end of the video. If you have any questions regarding the topic, you can ask them in the comment section. Thank you for watching.
Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.